We have the pleasure to receive uh, Professor Silvio, Ferra Silvio Ferraz Mello. He will talk about exoplanets for mathematicians. And so let's go ahead. You have the, the opportunity, Silvio. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to start uh, with my congratulations to uh, Annette and the people that have organized this uh, webinar. I am uh, very uh, happy to see uh, the success of these uh, seminars. We have four continents, we have uh, 30 people some every day. Uh, it's interesting that the pandemics make us think about other uh, to, to better explore the possibilities that we have already before, but have never used it. So I will start. Well, I will talk then uh, about exoplanets. And uh, the idea is to show a lot of, of problems that exoplanets are, are uh, showing to us that are interesting from the mathematical point of view. Next slide, please. Hello? Marcelo? Marcelo caiu? Não, Passar caiu. o joio. Sim, eu estou tentando aqui. Parece que travou aqui no meu também. Minha gente. <risos> que zebra, hein? É. Vai, é que a palestra vai ser muito boa, gente. Eu não tenho dúvida, eu vi esse, esse trabalho aí da NASA sobre esses exoplanetas e eu não sabia que tinha essa coisa, essa, esse padrão né, de, de solução né? de problema de corte. Ah, foi, foi. Ok. Well, this is our solar system. You see that we are in the, in the red part in the middle, very small ones. The solar system is not us, even if we are inside the solar system. The, the main parts of the solar system are the big planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And it's very interesting that my first book on celestial mechanics, the first book that I read cover to cover, the name of the book was Mechanics of the Solar System. The name of the book was not Celestial Mechanics. So there was some... Uh, Synonymous between mechanical celest celestial mechanics and the mechanics of the solar system. Our solar system is very old. It has the age is five billion years. The four planets I told. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And when we look at the periods of the planets of our system. You see uh, five years for Jupiter, about 10 years for Saturn, 19 years for Uranus, uh, 30 years for Neptune. You, you, you may see that these periods are very close to uh, rational numbers. Uh, between Jupiter and Saturn is close to 2.5. Between Saturn and Uranus is close to one half. Between Uranus and Neptune is close to 2 to third. But it is just close to. If, if I make the difference, k times the, the motion of the inner one minus k times the mere motion of the outer one, you see I have small numbers, but not very close to zero. 0 0.41, 0 0.63, and 0 0.08. So our planets are, are not in the resonance. Next slide. <laughs> you see, this, this is an experiment that has been done keeping Uranus, uh, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune at their places and changing the place of Saturn. And changing of the place of Saturn on a grid, uh, on a grid of uh, about uh, seven or 8,000 points, and for every initial condition making the, the, the integration. In the red, you see all initial conditions that lead to the disruption of the system very quickly. And in black and the gray, 
you see regions that where the problem, uh, the, the system subsists for the, the integration time, several million years, but in 50 million years, in fact, but uh, not very regular. These are regions of chaotic motion. And in, uh, in white, and in yellow, in this picture, you see the, 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 yeah, in the yellow, in this picture, you see regions where the movement is very regular. The system is not integrable, so the motion is always chaotic, but the chaotic is very small, so completely negligible. And you see from the, in this arrow, a small dot, blue dot, this is real Saturn. So the real Saturn is in the safe region, happy. <coughs> and the, we have, uh, uh, this is one picture that we may address from uh, our solar system. <laughs> Next. Okay, now I will talk about, we, we have since 1995, we have discovered a lot of new planets in the in the uh, in the in the universe. The the extrasolar planets are for short, the exoplanets. For instance, I show you one system that has found around the star whose poetic name is K2138. And you see two days, three days, five days, eight days, twelve days. And when you look the ratio of the periods. You have two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Okay, more than that. I, I, I ask you to look at the uh, at the colon on the right side. If you make the 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 the, the, the difference two n minus three n prime, uh, <coughs> let's let's skip the first one. The other one are two point forty eight, two point forty eight, two point forty nine. So. The difference between 2n and 3n prime, n is the inner, n prime is the outer in each pair. We, we have exactly the same number. What this means? This means that if instead of every data here is given with respect to an inertial system, an absolute system in which the, the axes are, are, are frozen. But if you, if you allow the system have a small rotation backwards with the velocity that is noted in, 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 in red here, 2.48 degrees per day, you have perfect commensurability. So with respect to, to a rotating system, at least the, at least the outermost, the, 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 the outermost four planets of this system are exactly uh, uh, a periodic motion. So the system is very close to a periodic solution. No? It, 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 this shows that the exoplanets start showing it has new realities that, okay, they were not completely uh, unknown uh, because the, the Galilean satellites of Jupiter show uh, a similar uh, fact, but for with big planets, this is the first time that we see this kind of uh, solution. Next. Okay. <clears throat> we have already discovered about 4,000 uh, exoplanets. And among these 4,000 planets, there is at least uh, 100 systems of planets uh, with several planets. Among them, I selected here a list uh, uh, of 11. In these 11, we, we, what we have are changes. Uh, I'm lighting the numbers. Okay. No, the sound is not good. Okay, uh, can we go? No. Okay, are you are you listening to me? Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So, 
this, this one that are igniting red is the, just the one that I have shown you uh, in the in the previous slide. Uh, it's a chain three two two three two two three two two three two two four times. But you have several other possibilities. You have several other uh, see for instance the the the, the last one. 322 and 221. The one, the, the name is Trappist 1. You see, there is a chain involving six planets 8 to 5, 5 to 3, 3 to 2, 3 to 2, 4 to 3. The resonances are not all equal, like in, in, in K2138, but they, they, they all, all kinds of resonances may be involved in these chains. No? I, I have listened, I have put a star in some of them to indicate those who, whose masses are known. Because when the masses are not known, it's very difficult to, 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 to make a, a, a good study of the system. Let, let us start with, with this, this that I have marked with light blue on the left. I will consider some of them separately. The first one. Ah, change the, the slide, please. Well, these are the, the, the exoplanets named GJ876. Look, they have two times one half. And they are very close. Uh, since the, 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 the relationships between the, the periods is, uh, is the same, more or less the same in the two resonances, we are very close to N minus N sub 1 minus 3 n sub 2 plus 2 n sub 3 equal to 0, where 1, 2, 3 are the, the, these three planets. Not, not, nothing to see with the, their actual names. It's the inner one, the one of the middle, the, the outer one. So this kind of resonance and the reson Laplacian resonance that are now going to be studied by many authors since several uh, years. Next. If you see in the figure on the right, you see, uh, ah, and before this, uh, if you look at the, uh, I told about the relation between the, the, the mean emotions, the mean emotions is the angular velocities. Now I give you the relations between the angles. The relations between the angles of this, uh, this system. You see, the longitude of the, the first one minus three times the longitude of the second one plus two times the longitude of the third one equal to zero. So, the system uh, rotates like shown in the figure on the, on, the, on the right side. You see there is one moment that is double t equal to zero in this figure where I have the three planets exactly aligned. Then the first planet gives four uh, uh, orbits around uh, the center, the second planet two revolutions, the third planet one revolution, and they come back to, to, to the same position. Uh, what is interesting in this case is that this is diff very different of what you know in the solar system, because in the solar system, as for the Galilean satellites, we have the same relation between the angular velocities. But when we look at the angles, the, the results not lambda 1 minus 3 lambda 2 plus 2 lambda 3 equal to 0, but this is equal to pi. This gives a geometry completely different for the case of the Galilean satellites. And I, I, I put here uh, as references two works already done by mathematicians about these systems uh, recently. One by Alessandro Celetti uh, uh, <coughs> three years ago, and another by Giuseppe Pucaco uh, that has been uh, just published in Celestial Mechanics uh, one month ago. Next slide. Okay. We can also study the system with uh, the, the, the tools of uh, used in the study of chaos. This figure in, in, in the left is constructed. Okay, the, 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 the two first planets are kept with their orbits as they are. And the third one 
is variated. The, the initial condition is variated in, in, in a grid of some hundreds of initial conditions. And for every one, one of these initial conditions, one indicator of chaos is com computed. In this case, the, 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 the indicator of uh, chaoticity that was used has been the magno, uh, one, one, one indicator that had been the, created by Pablo Cincotta. And uh, you see one region red, this region is highly chaotic, in, and one region green and blue. This is the region where the indicator of chaos index indicates that there are some chaos, but very mild. It is very not very strong. This is exactly the region that envelops <coughs> the initial condition. For some initial conditions, also the coefficients, of, the exponents of Lyapunov were computed. So you see in the figure of the right, the, the coefficient of Lyapunov. On the top of this figure, you see uh, several uh, examples of uh, uh, very, very small, uh, excuse me, very small Lyapunov time. We always refer to Lyapunov time, that is the inverse of the exponent of Lyapunov. So in this case, the, the, the Lyapunov time is about 10 to 3 years, so very, very short. So one system uh, having the, such behavior does not remain uh, near the, the initial condition long time. And this is the red region in, in this picture. Then if you go in the red region, but not in the, the, the plain red, but in the small uh, rivers of red inside the blue, okay, inside the green, we still have uh, chaos. But the Lyapunov times in this case are already t to 4, 10 to 4, 10 to 5 years. So we still have chaos, but much more or less than in the, in the plain red region. And if you go in the blue ones, you have the, the, the lowest curve shown in the figure of Lyapunovs. You have Lyapunovs that go beyond 10 to 5 mega years. Uh, Lyapunov 10 to 5 mega years, uh, the practice shows that when we have Lyapunov times of 10 to 5 mega years, this is not a theorem, this is a, from the from numerical experiences, it, it can uh, remain uh, moving in, 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 in close to its initial orbit for up to 1 billion years. So in the blue, this system is very, very stable. <coughs> okay, next. Well, now I, I will show another system completely different. Com not, not completely different, but completely different from the, the, the physical point of view. While in the, 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 the other one we had uh, we had uh, the planets very close to the central star. Here, we have a system that the, the, the planets are so far from the star that this system could be, an image could be uh, get with, with, with telescopes. And we, see, we can see the, the, okay, the star is not seen because the, the light of the star, is, the star is subtracted from this picture. But uh, where, where is some uh, is small, uh, patches is the, 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 the position of the star, and you see around the position of the star four planets. These planets, the, 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 the outermost one, close to the left border of the figure, this one has a period of about 400 years. This, these are giant planets, 10 times the mass of Jupiter, <laughs> in orbits much more larger than the orbits of the, 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 the giant planets of the solar system. And very few of their orbits have been uh, uh, observed till now. They are also shown in, in the picture. Please, next. 
Okay. In this case, uh, the, the, the periods between them are, are more or less close to one half. You see uh, 42, 101 is not exactly one half. 101 to 205 is more or less one half. 205 to 431 is a little bit smaller than one half. But in this case, <coughs> we, the, the periods are more uh, are very poorly known. Can we be back to the, 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 the previous one? One minute, please. So what we have, these, these arcs that appear in this figure corresponds exactly to what has been observed. So we see, for instance, in the, in the, in the outermost planet, we have observed just a small arc of 10 years in an orbit of 440 years. So to say that we know the period of this planet is uh, really an exaggeration. We don't know. We have a hint about it, but not the, the real planet. Even for the innermost ones, for which we know an arc a little bit larger because uh, uh, there was an old observation that could be used, Yet we have very small arcs, and the periods are much uh, are, are very uh, poorly known. So some authors have uh, tried the following. So, okay, we don't see the periods, but the system looks like uh, if it was a periodic system. Uh, let us try to, to, to fit the observations to a periodic system. Please, one, two more. Next. Ah, okay. So, uh, uh, one, one study has been done by, by two uh, astronomers, Gorzievsky and Mikashevsky, again, using the Magno indica indicator of chaos. And they have done the following. They have done, they have imposed that the system has or periodic orbits. And they have shown that these periodic orbs fits very well the observations that we have till now. But may pay attention, the observations that we have till now are very small, uh, very small arcs. So uh, this is not, uh, from the physical point of view, not, not very, very satisfactory. But anyway, look, these are the magno figures of the four planets of the region around the four planets. And the, the, the position of the, the, the planet in these, so, in these solutions that uh, <coughs> fitted by Gojevsky and Mikashevsky are the small dots inside the figure. So the lesson is we can find for this system one periodic orbs that fits the observations as well as an other uh, uh, orbit determination. So this is a system that we don't know if it is indeed periodic or not, but it is interesting to see that the observations are consistent with a periodic motion. So uh, the future will tell us uh, more about that. Next. This is another system that has been discovered recently. TESS is a new space telescope that is used for discovering uh, exoplanets that has been launched by NASA some two or three years ago. And with this, they have found this system, TOI-178, this exactly the same system that Philippe Robotel considered in the, in, the, in the seminar one week ago. And we see the periods 3, 6, 9, 15, 20. And the, the ratios are, uh, uh, okay, the first one, for, let us forget it, 3, 5, but 1 half, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, and 3 fourths. And important, in this case, the periods are very well determined. These planets are very close to the planets, 2 days, 6 days, 9 days. So the periods were, uh, are, uh, are observed very well observed. And you see, when we make the relations, k times the period of the, the, the angular velocity of the innermost planet, minus k prime times 
the next the, the, the angular velocity of the next one you see the numbers forget the first one yeah, it is a little bit different but the others 138 137 137 okay again we have a system in which the the planets are in such a situation that if we take a rotating system of axis the the, the the motion is perfectly periodic. Next. Well, uh, I go quickly here because uh, Robert has already shown these pictures one week ago. We, we, we have three Laplacian resonances between these periods. Well, one, two, three, four, five are the numbers of these five planets that have been selected. And you have then uh, n2 minus 3, n3 plus 2, n4 equal to 0. The other one, 2 minus 5 plus 3 equal to 0. And the other one, 1 minus 3 plus 2 equal to 0. And they have done integrations of about uh, 10 million years. And with these integrations, <coughs> sorry, 10,000 years. And in, in 10,000 years, you see that the, these angles are oscillating about uh, 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 a central value. So we have a periodic solution, and the real, prop, the real system is uh, a, a solution that is oscillating around the, 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 the real system. So next one. Okay, this figure has been uh, are two uh, maps done with the, the frequency analysis of Lascar uh, on the same system. They were discussed by Robotel, so I go ahead. Next. <coughs> well, now I will consider the more... Okay, these are lots of problems to be studied. What we know... Well, okay, we have already well studied the, the more simple case in, in which we have one star and two planets. There, what I have shown, there are one star and three planets, four planets, and even five planets. In the case of one star and two planets, this problem has been very well studied some 15, 20 years ago. Several approaches are possible. The first approach is the study of periodic orbits of the three body problems of these situations. This has been exhaustively done by Jonah G. Demetrio and by the Thessaloniki School. They have computed, the, the, they have shown the, the characteristic curves of periodic orbs for all, the, all these bodies, for all these problems, sorry. Uh, in the case of several resonances, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 2, etc. There is another, there is another possibility. And the other, the other possibility, the possibility number two, the possibility number two, is the numerical construction with an ad hoc dissipation. <coughs> what is this? We start the system from a, a simple solution, for instance, circular motions, and we put a small dissipation in the system. But this dissipation is put in such a way uh, that the, the system is driving smoothly to the periodic solution. And then he, he starts moving in the, in the periodic solution, which indeed, because of the dissipation, is not fixed, but will be changing adiabatically. This has been done by myself, mainly. And the other possibility is to construct the Hamiltonian of the system, and these periodic solutions are stationary solutions. Uh, it means uh, equilibrium solutions of the average Hamiltonian. So we construct the Hamiltonian, we make the average of the Hamiltonian, and we look for the maximum, the minima of, of the Hamiltonian. This has been done mainly by Christian Bolger from Cordoba and by Tatiana Michenko from Sao Paulo. Uh, there is a small anecdote about this, this, these works. Uh, is that I, I, I have been working in Rio de Janeiro for two years, uh, about, about the year 200, 2000. 
And when I came back to Sao Paulo and started working in my office, my office is just next door to the office of Tatiana Michenko. Okay, uh, I was working in my office, she was working her office. And one of, in one day, one of us, I don't remember who, uh, go to the next door and show the, 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 the other uh, colleague a picture. Look what I have found. And the other colleague could, took a, a, a sheet of paper on his desk. He just look at the mine. We had the same curves. So the, the two techniques, the two approaches, two, three, were being followed simultaneously. Uh, not, not in a programmed way. This has been a coincidence. Uh, in two offices, one next to the door of the other. And we got the same results. And we start working together from that day on, obviously. Next slide, please. I will prefer the, 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 the second one. This is, is, is the one in which I have worked myself. <coughs> because I think that is from the didactical point of view, it's much interesting to see the results. So the numerical construction with an ad hoc dissipation, pushing the inner body to outside. So if I have two planets and I push the inner one outside, I am provoking a convergent migration of the system. So I am squeezing one planet against the other. I start, as I told you, with circular orbs. I show two pictures. Uh, I will start by the picture of the right side. Okay, the picture in the right side is the position of the pericenter of the orbit. Okay, if I started with two circular orbs, the initial posi position is undetermined. But as soon as the system started being squeezed, they, 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 uh, Ellipticities, ellipticities are induced in the orbits and the, 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 the pericenters start being defined and we can follow them. And we see what happens. They are making crazy motions up to the point zero, the time zero. At the time zero, look, of pericenters. Will, will be uh, 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 frozen in the point zero and the other one in the point 180. The two, the two pericenters go naturally one to each side of the orbit. One to the right, the other to the left, let us say that. I continue skizzing. One of the switches positions. You see between zero and one, at the mid of the interval, more or less, the one that was a 180 jumps to zero. <coughs> so the, t the two systems uh, have now uh, 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 the PD centers on the same side. And this goes up to the time t equal to one. In the time t equal to one, okay, <coughs> the PD centers continue frozen, but now, the angle between them is no longer 0 or 180. It's an angle, okay, uh, some degrees, I don't, uh, in this case, about 90 degrees, but about only 84 degrees, if I remember well. Okay, <clears throat> and, and the system becomes completely asymmetric. If you look at the eccentricities on the left side, you see that I started with 0. Then the, the centricity of the, 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 the inner body. Uh, inner body is the one that's been squeezed against the second one. Grows, okay, up to, 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 to uh, the, 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 the centricity of the inner body grows. The centricity of the outer body, this is this one close to this B in, in the, in the, in the bottom of the figure, the figure. You see, he has a small variation, and then he goes to zero because the moment where the two peri the two pericenters are switched, the eccentricity must be equal to zero. It cannot switch one side to another if the eccentricity is not zero, and then it starts growing and grows, and I have here the curve. Okay, let's continue. Next slide, please. 
Okay, here are the results. So, when we start, we started with <coughs> uh, the first this, the first condition that we had was uh, to have one symmetric, uh, we call this apsidal correlation resonance. We have a, 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 an axisymmetric one, like in figure A. We have one pericenter on the left and the, the other pericenter on the right. In this case of the drawing, the, the pericenter of the inner orbit is on the left, the pericenter of the outer orbit is, is on the right. After some time, the eccentricity of the, 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 the outer body jumps, and the two starts having <coughs> pericenters on the same side. And for a long time, and for a long time, I am changing the system. Uh, the the it, the situation is kept. This is these are periodic solutions uh, uh, of the average problem, and then they become asymmetric. Two examples of asymmetric are shown in the lower. So, in the case of two planets plus one star, we can construct the periodic orbs that correspond to these solutions. Okay, in this case, we are, we are varying, varying, varying this, the, the, these orbs adiabatically to, to know the whole, the whole uh, uh, characteristic curve. But if I stop squeezing, it will remain uh, uh, forever in, in one situation of this kind. The next one. Okay. Uh, in this case, the, these are the characteristic curves <coughs> of these solutions. We see this is the first case in which the, 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 the two pericenters are in different sides. You see the, the horizontal axis, the eccentricity of the innermost uh, body. The outside, the vertical axis is the eccentricity of the outside body. And you have this bunch of lines. Every line corresponds to a family of periodic solutions corresponding to a given mass ratio. If I change the mass ratio, you see the numbers 2, 3, 5, 10. It, when I change the mass ratio, I change from one curve to another. So if I know the ratio of masses, uh, masses I, can, I can write, I can draw the characteristic curve for this system. And the red point corresponds to, to the system GJ 876 that was the first one that I have shown you uh, in this talk. You see this is the red point. The, the, the relation of the masses is, is, is about 3. Oh, this is the, the converse there, no, no matter. <coughs> the, the, the. So this is the, this is the point that corresponds to uh, the, to the solution. So the blue ones are, are old solutions for the initial words. The red one corresponded to the most recent art that has been published a few years ago, and this figure has been published by Christian Auger. This was the figure that was being obtained uh, in the room uh, aside of mine at that time. N next one. In that case, uh, the mass of the second bond was larger than the mass of the inner, the, the first bond. body. Now the mass, uh, the outer body is small compared to the inner body. So we have a complete, in that case, the, the, the curves are in this white space uh, below the, 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 this figure where, where the, the, the curves were, were drawn. Now I have the, 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 the characteristic curves on the other side. And we see that uh, <clears throat> I, can, I, I, I have the characteristic curves that starts slowly. Okay, they, they have a small variation. And at a given moment, they start making this excursion uh, to uh, to the high. This is the moment in which this, this corresponded to the point in which the, the periodic orbs that was symmetric uh, becomes asymmetric. Next slide. 
Okay, this is just for a, for for a, for an illustration. Uh, <clears throat> the, the work done by Michenko, Boje, and myself. We studied all resonances, po all possible resonances, uh, using a, a method mathematically more suitable, which is to take to to compute the the extreme of of the, the average Hamiltonian. This is the, these are the curves they have also obtained for the three to one uh, resonance. Uh, this has been, has been done for all important resonances in this paper they publi we published in 2006. And the next one. Once more. Gilberto. No, 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 it's not finished. The, the, the other was the last one. Okay. Hint. The hint. Okay. Now we have time for questions, comments. I have a, have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, Silvio, you mentioned uh, two papers which uh, I think have been discussing the, the mathematical aspects of the of, of this study, uh, right? I think you mentioned them around the middle of your talk. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what uh, what has been achieved and uh, what's still um, to be done? Well, uh, sorry. No, I think that uh, I, I, I will. I will. I, I will make an escape there. <laughs> I think that the best would be to invite Giuseppe Pucaco or Anna Celetti, uh, Alessandro Celetti to give a talk about this, because the subject is very technical and uh, it's difficult to, for me to, to, to say which are the results. But I can tell you about the results that have been obtained before that. <clears throat> First, the system has been studied by Laplace. Because the three, the three uh, largest satellites of Jupiter have periods very close to uh, one to two to four, okay? And they are in the situation in which, uh, I, let me, uh, Marcelo, vai, vai passando aí, eu, eu quero umas cinco ou seis depois dessa. Depois? Depois, depois. Vai, vai, vai. 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 Ok, this is the case of the Galilean satellites. Ok, this is good. This is good, the one, the one with the figure. The, the previous, e, voilà. <coughs> in, the, in, the, in the case of the Galilean satellites, we have 3 minus 3 and 2 plus 2 and 3 equal to 0. And the relationship of the angles is lambda 1 minus lambda 2 plus 2 lambda 3 equal to pi. And the, 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 the possibilities of we have for a, we, we cannot never have the three satellites aligned. You see, you, you have always, uh, if you put two in, in alignment, the third one is not. Or then is in alignment, but is, is in the other side. Like he, like he in the in the in the case B, <clears throat> when the satellites were deeply studied in the beginning of the second the the twentieth century, uh, William de Sitter uh, is tried to use the Poincaré techniques to study these motions, and the Poincaré techniques were uh, to consider a periodic orbit, and then. Uh, perturbate, the, disturb the periodic orbit 
to obtain the real art of the, the bodies. And the decision made it, uh, the first the first step was then to construct the periodic orbs. And so the sitter constructed the periodic orbs in which we have. However, the periodic orbs that we obtained were of the kind of, in, 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 if you look at the relation of between the, 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 the angles, was no, this, this is, is it, there is a three missing in this in this figure. Lambda one minus three lambda two plus two lambda three equal to zero, not equal to pi. So the sitter got the same, they got other, other periodic solutions. So these other periodic solutions of the sitter, the work has been redone recently by the, 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 the people from Rome. And they have, okay, they have found the same solution as the sitter, and they have studied it from the mathematical point of view. But for the tiles, I see, sir, Lee, I think that they would be very like, they would be very glad to telling us uh, uh, in in, a, in another seminar, I am not able to to, to answer in, uh, on their behalf. Oh, and the paper by Pukaku has been the paper of Pukaku has been published less than one month ago, so I have not yet been browsed it. Okay, thank you. More questions, comments. <laughs> Silvio, I have a curiosity. Um, is it possible to observe the regions of stability in these systems like we have in the solar system? I mean, this region of uh, um, asteroids, uh, like the region of L4 and L5 in the solar system, in Sun-Jupiter system? Sorry, I have not understood. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yes. Is it possible to observe in in this subsistence exoplanet subsistence uh, to see regions of large quantity of mass located in in some regions like uh, it it would be L four and L five in a three body problem in this subsistence or not? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Uh... Because we have three, three, three planets, uh, so uh, uh, points type as Lagrange points. I, I no, I don't think so. So we, 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 we the, 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 the stationary solutions are dynamical. Okay. Okay. Even in, even in a rotating frame, they are not uh, frozen. They are moving. Nice. Nice, nice. Some more questions? If not, we can thank again, Silvio, and clap the okay. hands, open the microphones. Thank you, and thank you, and sorry for the technical problems that uh, made us start with a little delay. <laughs> well, it was nice that uh, everybody was patient, and uh, especially the organizers uh, could figure out the solution. Okay. Thanks, Julie and Maisa.